this morning. He's been good to us. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, hey. From the rising of the sun. Come on, I'm going to praise him. Come on, sing it with us. I'm going to praise him.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, the only name above all names. Father God, we come as humble as we know how, asking God, that you will humble us even the more as we come to your throne of grace. Father God, wash us and cleanse us, O oh God. Purge us with his will, Father God, as we come to your throne of grace, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come thanking you for the breath of life on this morning. Father God, for the movement of our limbs, we are closing our right minds, oh Father God, for our health and strength. Oh Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are grateful and we are thankful, Father. We come with grateful hearts, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we lift you up, oh Father God, for you are worthy. We thank you for Jesus, God. We thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit, oh Father God. We ask that you would come in and move by your power. Have your way in this place. Lord, foremost, have your way in me, O oh Father God. Give me what to pray and who to pray and how to pray, O oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, O oh Father God. I thank you for being chosen on this morning, O oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for the breakthrough. Even right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory, God. Glory to your name, Father God. We lift you up, oh Father God. We ask that you would be in the midst of this service, oh Father God. Come by and see us, see about us, oh Father God. Be in the midst, oh Father God. Lord, I pray that our atmosphere is welcoming to the sweet Holy Spirit. Move by your power. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Fall fresh, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, the word that we hear, oh Father God, let it be new, oh Father God. Even if we've heard it before, oh God, let it be new, oh Father God. The sound, let it be new, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glorify your name, we do, O oh God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, O oh Father God. Come before us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. Lord, we are weak, O oh Father God. We are nothing without you, Lord. Move by your power in each and every one of us, O oh God. Meet our needs, O oh God. But not just for our good, but for your glory, O oh Father God. Come in and have your way, Lord. We ask that you stop by the hospital places, O oh Father. The sick and the shut in, the nursing homes, the rehabilitation, O oh Father God. Stop by all these places, Father, even in the jail cells, oh, Father God. Move by your power, Lord, even in those places, oh, Father God. Let your name be said. Let your name be heard. Let your name be talked about. Let your glory be talked about, oh, Father God. Let your name be talked about, oh, Father God. And your, and your life that you live for us be talked about, oh, God. Even in that place, save, oh, Father God. We ask for saving grace, oh, Father God. For healing grace, oh, Father God. Delivering grace, oh, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you would stop by each and every one of our homes, oh Father God. Lord, you know everything. Meet the need, oh Father God. Move us out the way, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us be examples, oh Father God. Before men and before the people in our households, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray a special prayer for our leaders, oh Father God. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to bless them from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, oh Father God. Have your way in them, O oh God, as they pour out, Lord. And they do pour out, O oh Father God. I ask that you will pour back into them, O oh God. Fill them up, O oh Lord, as they pour out into us, O oh Father God. Thank you for the love that they have for us, O oh God. For the love that they have for you, O oh God. Thank you for their obedience, O oh Father God. Thank you for them not giving up even when they want to give up, O oh Father God. When it gets tough, O oh Father God. Thank you for keeping them in their minds, O oh Father God, in their bodies, O oh Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, church, oh, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, family, oh, Father God. Have your way, oh, Father God. And, Lord, we lift the Marie's families up, up, up upon you, oh, God, all over the world, oh, God, in our church home, in other church homes, all over the world, oh, God. There's many grieving, oh, Father God, but your word says there's a time for such a thing. So, God, do what you do, oh, Father God. I pray that each family that's grieving all over the world, they will embrace what you give us, oh, God, during these times. Embrace your love, your comfort, and your peace, oh God, as only you can give, oh Father God. Make the crooked way straight, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way in this place. Oh Father God, we come with an expectant heart, oh God, that you will move by your power. And Lord, we know you, you have an expectant heart, oh God. So Lord, have us to line up with your will. Line up with your way, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, if there's anything, oh God, that I forgot to mention, Lord, you know my heart. I lift it all up to, to you, oh God. I lift it up before you, oh God. You know all things. Now, God, God, I'm glad you're God that know all things. So, Lord, have your way. Move by your power. You are welcome in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's give God the glory, honor, and praise.
Good morning, church. Uh, today, I'm bringing the scripture from Romans 15, 13, from the Amplified Virgin. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, and believing through the experience of your faith, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. I pray we all will be here and doers of his word. Amen. Amen.
trust it no matter what it looks like.
and we can say that it is because of the benefits that he had loaded us down with oh, yeah, that yeah. we're able to sit here right now just like she said uh it's the goodness of the lord what is it it's the blessings of the lord it's the lord's blessings that we're enjoying right now yes ma'am yes sir he has given us benefits for the day new mercies he has granted us and so we're experiencing it right now and we are thankful and we are grateful for that uh, we want to uh, for you to get your tithe and your offering together as we prepare to give um, this morning. We want you to know there are multiple ways for you to give. There are multiple ways for you to give. Uh, if you're watching by way of social media, there's two or three ways that you're able to give. Um, you're able to do it electronically by Cash App. Our Cash App address is dollar sign gift of life 1651. Um, you're also able uh, to call in um, and you can call us at 319-232-3428. Uh, there is someone there in the office waiting to receive your call um, and they're able to run your card for you or you can drop it off here at 1651 Sycamore Street here in the city of Waterloo. Um, someone can come curbside and uh, receive it from you or you can drop it in the black lockbox there on the wall by the door. Or you can mail it by the traditional U.S. mail to P.O. Box uh, 362, Waterloo, Iowa, 50704. Again, P.O. Box 362, Waterloo, Iowa, 50704. And if you're here sitting in the building and you have a card that needs to be swiped, if you step into the lobby, uh, there is someone there that will be able to swipe your card for you. Um, and we just ask, um, whichever way that you give, that you please make sure that you put your full, um, I'm going to say government name on it, uh, your first and your last name so that things are properly credited to you um, <clears throat> because uh, some of the nicknames and things we do not know or some of the initials. Uh, if you have a giving number, we ask that you would please make sure that you put your giving number on um, your envelope on your check um, or if you can put it on the memo line of the cash app. Um, but if you're sitting in the building and you want to give the traditional way, we ask that everybody in this building would please stand to your feet. And we ask that you would follow the directions of the ushers there in the rear. Even if you don't have anything to give so that people don't have to climb over you. Um, if you could just walk around and touch the reciprocal, maybe that's the best that you can do right now. But we believe, God, that in the days to come that he would uh, bless you and that he will multiply and add to you in the name of the Lord.
because it is in him we live, move, and have our being. And I can't live without him. And so for the rest of my life, I'm going to serve him. There's nothing that hell can put out that would make me turn my back on God. You understand there's nothing that this world could offer that would cause me to turn my back on God at all. There's not enough money to make me turn my back on God. Scripture says, what can separate me from the love of God? There's nothing that can separate me from Him. Don't think that the enemy hasn't tried. Don't think that the mind uh, is so sound that it hasn't tried to manipulate us into thinking that we can do better without him. But I want you to understand there's nothing in this world that I would rather have than Jesus. I've tried him and I found out that he's all right with me. He's proven himself. He showed himself. And for that reason, we're grateful and we're thankful for all that the Lord has done. If you have your Bibles, we're not going to be before you long. We just need to wrap this up. And then we'll give you the announcements. And then we'll be out of your way. But we need to wrap up and we need to finish what it is that we were doing. And what we were sharing. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 19 through 20. Once you have it, just so that we can honor his word, would you just please stand to your feet? That'll let me know that you have it. And if you don't have your device with you at all, we just ask that you would just stand as we honor the reading of the word of God. So the Bible says in the beginning, They stand for presidents. They stand for kings. And he's all of that and more. And so we honor him by standing, reading Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 19 through 20. It reads, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, uh, I am with you always to the very end of the age again. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Father, thank you now for the reading of your word. We thank you, God, that um, your word has already uh, been sent forth and God that your word will accomplish that for which it was sent forth to do. Now Father as we always ask amplify your voice in this place that your people will hear God and another they will not follow. We pray Lord God now that I would decrease that you may increase in this place. We pray Lord God that as the word goes forth that it will fall on good ground. Father, we come against every spirit of distraction. We come against everything that would try to captivate our minds or steer our minds away from focusing on you. God, because you are a jealous God and you will have no other gods before thee. So, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that every thought we bring into captivity, every vain imagination now, we bring it down in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of distraction, we bind it now in the name of Jesus. We turn our full attention on you, God, because we know, God, that your word is food to our souls. We know, God, that our faith is strengthened because of your word. And so, Father, we thank you for your word now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that your people will be strengthened. We pray that your people will be built up. We pray that your people will be encouraged in the name of Jesus. And, Father, even if they don't see, God, immediate results right now, thank you, God, that in the days, the weeks, and the months to come, as your word unfolds in their lives, God, as uh, their minds are illuminated, 
educated, God, that uh, they will be strengthened and they will realize, God, that your word is really what it is. It's power in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Uh, as we were sharing with you last week, we were speaking uh, on this final point of this series uh, called The Assignment. We were speaking to you uh, concerning the assignment of the church and the importance in understanding why God has called out the church and why God has established the church. Not only is not just more than just a building, but you, you need to understand that you as an individual, as you as the temple of the Holy Ghost, are the church of Jesus Christ. And so whether we are gathered together in this place called Gift of Life, whether we're gathered in Mount Carmel or Antioch, wherever it may be, in a uh, edifice where we gather together, that's just the assembly of the people of God. That's the assembly of the church. But understand that when I'm sitting at home in my house by myself, guess what? The church is still bad. When I'm driving along in my car and there's nobody but me and my family in it, guess what? We are the church. When I'm sitting at my desk at my cubicle, guess what? I'm still the church. While I'm sitting at the restaurant, uh, waiting for my food to come to my table. Guess what? I'm still the church. Even if I'm laying in the hospital, waiting for the doctors to come in and to give a diagnosis, guess what? I am still the church. And so we need to understand that we are the church. And the church is more than just a building. Because as we showed you when he was talking to Peter, when he called out the church, they were sitting on the backside uh, of a mountain. They were sitting outside. And he called them out. He called the church out right there. They were not in a synagogue. They were not in a building. They were not in a place that had a name over uh, the, the, the opening of the door. But understand that we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's, he didn't give it a denomination or nothing like that. But he just called us out as believers. Those that are disciples of him. That will follow after him. And so I say to you today that God has given the church an assignment. And as we looked last week, as we looked at this particular passage of scripture, the first point that we brought out as we looked at this, because this is called the Great Commission. This is when he commissioned them. This is when he gave them a charge. He gave them an order. He gave them a mandate. Uh, he gave them authority. Um, and he sent them out to fulfill a, a particular purpose. It wasn't a, a purpose uh, that had anything to do with their own personal agendas but it was the purpose for which uh, he came. It was the purpose for which when he told Peter it's up on that rock that I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It was not to make a name for ourselves but it was to advance the kingdom of God. And that is the mission of the church to make sure that we advance the kingdom of God. It is not to try to make a name ourselves. It is not uh, to try to outdo the church down the corner. It is not to try uh, to make sure that we're on a larger platform. But we have to understand it's, if God keeps us even in a small state, we still have the responsibility to further the kingdom of God. And so last week we took a look at uh, the first point to preach the gospel to all nations and to all people. I think you got the point last week, but to move to so we can expedite time, let's move to the next point is to work miracles in Jesus' name to testify to the gospel. Uh, it is funny because if you read the Great Commission and you read it in the Gospels, because that's where you're going to find it, you'll find it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as I told you last week, you'll find it in all four Gospels. It is written there because it is something that he wants us to make sure that we understand. There are certain pa passages of Scripture in the Gospels that are not recorded in every one of them. But this particular point, the, com the Great Commission, it is recorded in each one of the Gospels because it is the mission, it is the assignment of the church and God does not want us to falter or error in why he created the church. He didn't create the church for us just to come and to sit and to gather on Sunday mornings and do nothing else but he created the church as I told you so that the kingdom of God could be furthered, so that the kingdom of God could be advanced. That's why he created the 
church. But I'm so glad that in uh, assembling and calling out the church, he allows us to come together to worship and to fellowship together so that we can gain strength, so that we can receive instruction from one another, so that we are able to leave out of this place and go out there and make a difference and let our light shine and uh, make sure that we are the salt and the light of the earth so that the world can see that there is uh, a reality in serving a true and a living God and that God does exist. But here it recorded in Mark, the 16th chapter, it is, it is a, a bit different from what you read in Matthew. It is a bit different from what you read in Luke and what you'll read in John. And so to work miracles in Jesus' name, to testify to the gospel. Let's take a look at what Mark has to say. Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 15 through 18. And it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, in Matthew, it basically said that we were to go and to preach the gospel to all nations and to all people. But he said to every creature. Let me tell you, even if there's a mouse in the house, <laughs> preach it. <laughs> Verse number 16, he said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will follow them who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpent, serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will not by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so in essence, what he's telling us, listen, when you go out in the name of Jesus, you can't go out in nobody else's name. You can't, you're not deputized by anybody else. You don't have any authority. The, your denomination doesn't have the authority. Come on, somebody. Your last name doesn't carry the authority. Your financial status doesn't carry the authority. But what I want, your educational background doesn't carry the authority. But if you use my name, if you move forth, and if you go forth in my name, guess what? Then you're going to see signs, miracles, and wonders. When you go out there, and if you do it in my name, listen, you'll run up on devils, you'll run up on demons, you'll run up on things that are trying to overtake your house, evil forces. But if you use my name, guess what? Demons will have to become subject. They'll have to be cast out. If you come to a place, and there are those that are sick, and they need healing, if you use my name, you'll be able to lay hands on the sick, and you'll watch them recover. I want you to understand when doctors have given people up, and they have said there's nothing else that they can do, but when the people of God began to pray, and they began to touch and agree, and the person that was supposed to leave here ends up, they go to test them and look at them and find out what they thought was going to destroy them is no longer there, or they're still surviving, even in stage four cancer. Guess what? That is a miracle. And so God is saying, listen, I'm going to give you this kind of authority and power that when you go out, when you go out and you use my name, you'll see miracle signs and wonders. And so when you go, and you know there are people now in this day and age, they don't believe that miracles are for now. Uh, I dare you to look at somebody and tell them I'm a miracle right here. If you ain't seen a real one, look at me. If you ain't touched a miracle, go ahead and put your arm, put your hand on my shoulder. I yell, grab me by my head, cause you don't know where I come from. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the things that the enemy threw at me. You don't know the weapons that were formed against me. You don't know what the devil had to say or the assignment that the enemy put out against me. But through it all, God has preserved me. He has kept me. He has delivered me from every evil work of the enemy and preserved me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory. They try to say that miracles were for the biblical times. But I stand here to let you know God still works miracles. You hear me? He still works miracles. 
Uh, he still works miracles. He still turns things around. He's still raising the dead. Come on, somebody. He's still opening up blinded eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's still unstopping deaf ears. Uh, he's still causing limbs that don't want to act right and work right. He's still causing them to grow and to function the way that they're supposed to. Oh, God. He's still stopping issues of blood. Uh, I'm a witness to it. He's still regulating the hearts uh, that want to explode. Uh, he's still causing people that had strokes to have mobility and be clothed in their right mind. Ah, oh, yes he is. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a miracle worker. He's still working miracles. I believe right now that there's somebody sitting under the sound of my voice that needs a miracle from God. Oh, yes ma'am, yes sir. And I don't want you to give up and don't you let the skeptics come with them lies and come with the scrap that they come with to try to make you think that God is still not a able to work miracles. Those were in the biblical times. Those were left on record to build our faith. But I want you to know there are still modern day miracles. So he wants us to work miracles. But you can't work it by yourself. <sighs> you can't work it on your own. You have to have an authority or a power that's greater than yours. See, the devil ain't scared of you by yourself. Understand, if you don't have the power of God, he ain't scared of you. But he, what he's scared of and what makes him tremble is the power of God that works in you. That's what he identifies with. He identifies with the power that's on the inside of you. He identifies with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. He's not ignorant of the Holy Spirit. He's not ignorant of the Holy Ghost. He's not ignorant of God and he's not ignorant of Jesus because he came from heaven. He was there with him. He knows what he's dealing with. He knows what he's having. He's up against. But he's a big enough fool to think that he can outdo God. And he can try. Get a, get, get a devil to hang forever. He's going to try. But when it's all said, done, and over, he's already defeated. He's already defeated. And all he needs to do is go to Revelations and read it. He's already defeated. And so number one, the Great Commission, it tells us to preach the gospel to all nations and people. Number two, he tells us to work miracles in Jesus' name to testify to the gospel. And he's, we're doing it so that uh, it brings attention to God. That's why we do it. We do it, not so that we can be praised, but we do it so all glory can go to God. Let your light so shine before men that they'll see your great works, your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Number three, he assigns them when he commissions them. Not only does he tell them to preach the gospel, to work miracles. But he says, baptize new believers. There are two ordinances that God gave the church. Two. And all that other stuff is stuff that we have created. Number one, he tells us to baptize new believers. Number two, he tells us to serve communion, to take up the communion temple. Those are the two ordinances of the church. Those are the two things that he tells us that we must do. These are the two things that he has left on record for the New Testament church. Listen, I need you to baptize new believers. Baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection. So that means when I come and I give my life to Jesus Christ and I make the confession and I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, and after all that is said and done, I'm saved. Then we are to take you to the water. And it symbolizes the burial and the resurrection 
of Christ. It represents the forgiveness and the cleansing from sin that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So he's saying when you go out and you preach and you work miracles, those that see it and get saved, what I need you to do after they get saved, the truth of the matter is sometimes we have done a disservice because we let people, they get saved one Sunday and then we have baptism on a, another Sunday. But how we really should do it is when they get saved that Sunday, that pool should already be filled. And we should right then take them down because this is what God has instructed us to do. Baptism publicly acknowledges one's confession of faith and belief in the gospel message. So he said, when you go out there and you preach, and new souls are going to be added. Because I want you to understand when Peter went out there to preach, on that very Sunday when he preached, the Bible talks about there were 3,000 souls added to the church. When we preach and we preach the message of Jesus Christ, it changes things. It changes the lives of people. If you really want to see the lives of people change, preach Jesus. That's what makes the difference. Oh, you ain't got time to, like I told you last week, to preach your opinion. You ain't got time to talk about what you think. You ain't got time to preach about somebody else's philosophy. But time is winding up now. And I want you to understand you got to seize every, you got to maximize every moment that God gives us. And you got to preach Jesus. You got to point, you got to point people to the cross. You got to tell them what God says. You got to tell them what the word of the Lord says. Because it is the word of the Lord that's going to change the very lives of people. And after they have been converted, after they have been changed, after they have made the confession, the Bible says then we take and we baptize them so that uh, it is it symbolizes the change that has been made in their lives. That doesn't mean that we don't need to be baptized. The word says you do. Even Jesus himself. Even Jesus himself. Do you remember? Uh, it was John the Baptist that was there. Yeah, and I ain't got time to get into it. But even Jesus himself went to get baptized. And he got baptized in the Jordan. He didn't get baptized in some water that it had chlorine in it and it was all clean and wonderful because the Jordan was dirty. Yes, right. oh, no. oh, my God. And it's when he was baptized and when he came up the dove descended and said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We have to baptize believers. Number four. Disciple those who receive Christ. This is the part that becomes a little challenging. This is the part that becomes uh, a little uh, hard to do. Because after you've preached to them, you've worked miracles in the name of Jesus. You've baptized them. Now you have to disciple them. Uh, preaching is one thing because preaching can sometimes make you feel good. Uh, preaching will work with you, especially if you get one of them preachers that can know how to do all those verbal, uh, those vocal calisthenics. Uh, but, you know, we are saved by the foolishness of preaching. Uh, preaching, sometimes you wonder why people are so moved in the middle of preaching. It is because it's just something that's in it. If we're preaching the word of God, it changes the lives of people. And people up there sweating, acting like they can't have breathe, and they're delivering the word of God, and people's lives are changed. But let me tell you the challenging part. is to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. To sit at the feet of Jesus, to sit at the feet of a teacher, to sit and to be taught how to operate and how to live in the kingdom of God becomes challenging. Because when you are being, I know for me, when I had to sit in a classroom and I had to learn biology and I had to deal with geometry and trigonometry, those different subjects, when I had to sit down and had to listen to the teacher, it became boring to me. I could listen maybe the first 25, 30 minutes. And then after that, I was out of there. They have cell phones now. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. We were writing notes. Now, kids got cell phones and, and, and iPads and, and Chromebooks. But it's big. 
be a disciple of Jesus Christ, understanding how to live in the kingdom of God. Understanding the concepts and the principles and the precepts and the statutes of God. How to make sure that we are not a shame and a reproach on his kingdom. To make how to make sure that we don't crucify him afresh. How to make sure that we operate and we exemplify the character and the integrity of God. These are the challenging things. These are the things that the enemy will cause us to become bored with because they don't sound exciting. But now I have to deal with me. <laughs> I got to deal with my life. I got to deal with my habits and my addictions. Because let me tell you, when you get saved, <laughs> it don't act like them things fly out the window. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Don't act like when I got saved that I I, I start doing all my stuff. Mm. Let me tell you, when I got saved, uh uh, it didn't leave right there. It came through a process of sanctification. It came through a process of deliverance. It came through a process of being disciple. And let me tell you, some of them things are still lurking around. And you know, I have to fight with them. Any, do I have any witnesses in here? I don't want everybody to be deep on me. Let me tell you something. I got some things that y'all know what I say. It ain't a skeleton. Because a skeleton mean ain't no meat on it. You just see the white of the bone. Mine is a carcass. There's still some meat on it. There's still some flies flying around it. Nephew, they act, they trying to play with me. They trying to act like they ain't, they, ain't where I, they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Catch me on the right day at the right time. <laughs> oh, mother, you said it sometimes any day. Uh, if it's a bad week, especially. <laughs> and I realize the Bible says that it, it, any man that be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's how Jesus looks at us. But you need to understand there's a process of being disciple. There's a process of going through sanctification to get us to a place of perfection. Not flawlessness, but mature in God. How we reach a place of maturity in God is through being discipled. How do I live in this kingdom? How do I operate in this kingdom? Who am I in this kingdom? And that's how the enemy messes up with it. That's how the enemy messes us up. Because he doesn't want us to know who we are in the kingdom. So he doesn't want us to go through the process of discipleship. Disciples making. Disciple making is entering into relationship to help people to trust and follow Jesus. So I have to have a relationship with God. And then I have to have a relationship with people to disciple people. Let me tell you something. How do you think gang members, people that are in gangs, how they become so loyal and dedicated? Because the head, the shot caller, the head one, develops relationship with them. And they say, I, I didn't have any family. I, 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 I was, I, I was uh, rejected by people. No, I, I didn't have anybody. And the game, the, the street found them. And they develop relationship with them. And after they develop relationship with them, then they begin to disciple them. Why do you think Islam is so large? They develop relationships. Yeah. What do you think Jesus did when he called out the twelve? He developed a relationship with them. He kept them close. He kept them close. They were the ones that he was going to use and he was going to scatter. They were going to disciple others. But there were those that he held them close and he developed a relationship.
relationship with them. He let them on the inside. He was transparent with them. And so to make disciples, we have to have a relationship. Following Jesus, we make disciples of people by coaching, teaching, listening, counseling, modeling, and the list goes on. You would not believe that it didn't always mean that I had to sit down and preach to you to disciple you. But sometimes it's how I live, it's how I conduct myself, it's how I respond to situations. You understand? It's how I respond to a situation. You know what's been going on. Because you know one thing I come to find out? People know what's really going on. Because all you got to do is go to Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. People know what's going on. And a lot of times people know what's going on in our lives. But sometimes God will let us go through things and he'll put us on an open display. Especially with those of us that belong to God. And we'll say, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. Let me tell you, I come to find out, y'all heard me say this before, I come to find out, when I say that, so I, I, I think twice before I say it. Because when you say, Lord, let your will be done, use me any way you want to use me. Because sometimes we'll end up like Job, and God will have considered us, and he'll put us on open display. And people We'll disciple people, believe it or not, by how we respond to what is going on. You wouldn't believe how many people are watching to see when somebody that went on Facebook and threw shade about you. They're watching to see how you're going to respond. they watching. they watching to see how they going to respond to that. How they going to handle that. I know what's going on in their house. Let's see how they're going to act when they see that individual in the street. So you wouldn't believe that we can disciple people by how we carry ourselves, by our conduct, by our counseling, by coaching. And so he's telling his disciples, look here. Listen. This is what I need you to do. I'm giving you an assignment. I'm commissioning you to go forth. I want you to preach to all people. Everybody, every creature, preach. I want you to work miracles in my name. I want you to baptize new believers. And then I want you to disciple men. Disciple those who receive Christ. This is what I need you to do. I'm going to send you forth to do it. But listen, before you get, before you go, before I send you, this is what I need for you to do. I'm going to need you, if we go over to Luke, he'll tell them, now listen, carefully. I'm sending you the promise of the Father. Because for you to get this job done, you're going to need some help. Because you ain't going to get this done on your own. Because he understands our flesh. He knows uh, the legalness of our flesh. He knows the power of our flesh. He said, and he knows how people are. He knows how his children are. He said, so listen, I'm going to need you. I'm going to send you the promise of the Father. This is what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you be endowed. Because right now, you ain't got no authority. Right now, you ain't got no power because the Holy Ghost ain't come upon you. I need you to go to Jerusalem and I need you to stay right there. And there's going to be a day coming that you're going to be endowed with some power. Because the only way you're going to get this job done, the only way that you're going to be able to go out and preach the gospel to all creatures, the only way you're going to be able to go out and work miracles in my name, the only way you're going to be able to go out and baptize new converts, and the only way you're going to be able to disciple this stiff-necked, hard-headed folk, this is what I need you to do. Go to Jerusalem and tarry there. Wait right there. Because I'm going to send you some help. I'm going to send you some power. I'm going to send you some authority. I'm going to send you something that the devil is going to run from. I'm going to send you something that's going to cause demons to 
dribble. I'm going to send you something that's going to make a difference, but I need you to stay there. Don't get too excited. Don't get ahead of yourself. Listen to what I'm telling you. I gave you the assignment. I'm commissioning you to go forth. But I need you to go to Jerusalem and sit there. I need you to go to give the light. And I just need you to sit there for about 90 days. I need you to sit there for about a year. And I promise you, I promise you, the power of God is going to come upon you. And you'll be able to go forth. But I need you to hear what I'm telling you, James, John, Peter. I need you to hear me. Go to Jerusalem. Tell somebody you better stay right there. <laughs> the enemy is always trying to make us move. The enemy is always trying to make us move. The enemy is always trying to cause us to abort things prematurely. The enemy is always trying to sabotage what God is doing in our lives. The enemy is always trying to make us feel like we're being rejected or overlooked. The enemy is trying to use that so you'll move, so you'll miss the blessings of the Lord, so you can miss what God is really trying to do in you. Because I got to wait, he already gave me the commission. He told me to go, but he said, I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. But wait a minute. Go to Jerusalem. On your way to go, you need to stop by Jerusalem and stay right there. Let me tell you something. You better listen and you better know that God understands what we're up against. This world is getting crazy about the minute. This world is Becoming more and more troubled. It's more and more that people are falling away. People are throwing in the towel and walking away. But understand, Jesus is telling them, go sit at Jerusalem and wait because they hadn't been anointed with the Holy Ghost yet. If they were to leave the moment he left, then they wouldn't have been able to handle the pressure that Jesus himself felt. The Bible says that we have a high priest that is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus was tempted at all the same points that we were. He allowed himself to be 100% man and 100% God for our sake. For our sake. He did that for us. Let me tell you why. Listen, John the 15th chapter, verses 19 to 20. It said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Let me tell you, when you become a, when you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, I want you to understand the world hates the disciples of Jesus Christ. Understand, and I know people are trying to say, that ain't you, people still love Christians. Understand what I'm trying to tell you. I'm talking about the enemy in people. I'm not talking about people in general, but I'm talking about the enemy that's in people. I want you to understand, when we talk about the world, we're talking about the enemy, because he is the prince and the power of the air. And I want you to understand, just as much as God got ambassadors in the earth, the enemy has agents in the earth as well. And I want you to know that people are operating in the spirit of the enemy. Sometimes people are operating out of the hatred and the evilness of the enemy because they haven't come in contact with Jesus Christ yet. And so God understands that for you to come up against that out there, you're going to need some help. He said, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, listen to what Jesus says. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. He said, if they persecuted me, if they persecuted, Jesus said, if they persecuted me, guess what? They will persecute you too. And so I'm finally learning to understand now that if they hated on Jesus and if they persecuted Jesus, guess what? They're going to persecute me too. Guess what? If they, if they ain't going to keep his word, guess what? 
I can stand up here and preach all I want to. They ain't always going to keep mine either. This is what scripture has to say. But guess what? We still have the commission to go. We still have the assignment that we have to go and we got to preach. It ain't my responsibility to make you keep the word. It's my responsibility to give it to you and you choose what you want to do with it. He tells them, he says, listen, this is why I got to give you the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He said, because I like how this is worded in the message Bible, Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse number 16. It says, stay alert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is hazardous work mm -hmm. I'm assigning you to. You are going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you some very Smart animals, predators, or wolves. Wolves operate in packs. They know how to communicate with one another. They know how to hide in the bushes and not overwhelm a prey or spook a prey. But they'll assign one or two to make the initial attack. Then if, even if it's larger than them, then at the right time, they will signal the rest of them. You, when you hear all that howling, they, there's a message in their howling. And they'll cause the other ones to come a running. He said, listen, I'm getting ready to send you like sheep amongst a wolf pack. Let me finish reading it. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourself. Well. And it says this, be as shrewd as a snake, but inoffensive as a dove. In essence, in the Greek James Version, it says, be as wise as a serpent, but as harmless as a dove. Now, the snake gets bad, a bad rap because of the God. Because snakes are very cunning. And they're very crafty. And they know how, to, they're very cautious. They're very uh, hyper vigilant. They, they, they watch everything. And so, in essence, he's saying here listen, be shrewd as a snake. He's using similes here, uh, a figures of speech to compare two unlike things. A snake and a dove. He said, listen, I need you to be as shrewd as a snake. I need you to be as intelligent, tactical, strategic, wise in your human understanding as a snake. Yes. Now I'm sending you out there. So you're going to need to know when to speak yes. and when not to speak. Yes. You're going to need to know when to stay and you're going to need to know when to walk away. Yes. You're going to need to know when just to sit and you won't know when it's time to stand. You won't need to know when it's time to rebuke or it's time to not say nothing at all. I need you to be as wise. I need you to be as shrewd as a snake. But I need you to be as harmless as a dove. In essence, what I'm trying to, what he's saying with that is, he said, I need you to no compromise life in regards to what is right and wrong. I need you to be just like a dove. Yeah. Call it what it is, good and evil. Darkness and light. This is what I need you to be. So I'm going to have to give you the Holy Ghost. Because it's the Holy Ghost that will discern where you are. It's the Holy Ghost that will give you the behavior, the ability to discern what's going on. When you should move and when you shouldn't move. If you should go or if you should not go. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to guide you and lead you. The Holy Ghost will tell you it's the middle of the night. Get up. It's time to leave this city. You've preached the gospel, but it's time for you to go. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to let you know. No, that is not your friend. No, they have an ulterior motive. No, 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 no. Don't eat at their house. Don't put not don't put nothing in your mouth from that house. Because there's poison in it. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. That's the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost if you're gonna go forth in the ministry of Jesus Christ. There's an enemy against the church, and it is Satan himself. It is not the person that you are 
sitting next to. Do you remember when Jesus rebuked Peter? He rebuked him when they were, I think it was near the garden when he told him, he said, look, get me behind me, Satan. He was speaking to Peter. Why? Because Peter was talking like the enemy. But he addressed the spirit. He didn't say it to Peter. He was addressing the spirit that was in Peter. When you have the Holy Ghost, it'll let you discern what you're dealing with. It'll let you discern if somebody have ulterior motives or if they have a good motive toward you or not in this thing called ministry. That's right. Amen. That's right. We've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. When he said, go there, tear me there, stay right there. Just stay there. I'm going to send you what you need. And when I give it to you, it's like he said, I'm going to show you. Right before you leave there, before you are scattered, y'all, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So they, they carried there. They hung there in the upper room. And it was more than just the 12. <laughs> I think it was 125, 120 people that were in the upper room. So it was more than just the 12 disciples. But it was 120 uh, men and women of God up there in the upper room that was getting ready to be sent forth in the kingdom work of Jesus Christ. The Bible says all of a sudden there was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> huh. And it filled the house. And the text says that upon each of them sat a cloven tongue as a fire. And they began to speak in other tongues. And they just weren't speaking in a tongue that didn't make sense. That only God could interpret. I or the spirit could interpret. But they were speaking in a language that was being interpreted. And it was being understood by the people on the outside of the building. On the outside of the room. There was a message that was going forth to those on the outside. And they were hearing their native language. And they were astonished by what they were hearing. And they said, are these men drunk? And it is only basically new. And they're drunk. But they were not drunk. They were being filled with the Spirit of God. And they began to speak in other tongues. And God was sending a message. And it was after the day of Pentecost. That Peter, because he was filled with the Holy Ghost, because had Peter tried to preach before he got the Holy Ghost, guess what? 3,000 wouldn't have been added to the church. But because he was filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit unctioned him and gave him what to preach, how to say it. I promise you the Holy Ghost will know how to word your mouth. Look at somebody and tell them, we need the Holy Ghost. Because it will teach us how, it'll teach us what to speak. It'll teach us what to say. It'll teach us what not to say. Amen. Spoke the word. And when they were done, the Bible says 3,000 souls were added to the church. Because he waited in Jerusalem, received the power of God, understood his assignment that God had given them, and that the assignment was bigger than Peter. It was bigger than Peter. The assignment of the church is to go preach the gospel. The assignment of the church is to work miracles in Jesus' name. The assignment of the church is to baptize new believers. The assignment of the church is to disciple those who receive Christ. The assignment of the church is to look after orphan and widows. <laughs> the assignment of the church is to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, Deal with the incarcerated. God has given the church an assignment. But somewhere along the way, the church, not everybody, the church has forfeited the assignment because the assignment becomes too challenging. 
the assignment becomes too hard. And let me tell you what else has happened. People have begun to fall by the wayside of the church because the things that God has asked us to do, they're too hard. They seem too challenging. I'm too tired. I'm too old. I can't do it. I'm not equipped to do it. But God said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm here to tell you that God has assigned us something to do. And many of us need to take an opportunity to tell God I'm sorry that I have not done what you've asked me to do. I've made every concession for everything else in my life. I have made every excuse for everything else. But I have not done what God has asked the church to do. And I'm the church. You the church. You the church. You the church. You're the church. Jimmy, you're the church. Pat, you the church. Roger, you're the church. Anita, you're the church. Lisa, you're the church. Ray, you're the church. We are the church. But we waiting on another church to do what we need to do. <laughs> Look at somebody tell them, quit waiting on me. <laughs> Quit waiting on me. If it's in your power, do it. It's time for the church to arise. Notice what I said. I didn't say gift of life. I didn't say gift of life. I said it's time for the church. That means you. This is where the church assembles. This is the assembly. Right. We assemble here. Yes. But guess what? When we leave here, I say this is the building. This is the edifice. But when we leave here, the church leaves. The church gets in their Lincolns, Cadillacs, Nissans, Chevys, and they go to their respective addresses. And so guess what? You can find 14 churches on one block. What am I talking about? Your neighbor, you, and everybody else on your block that are born again believers, there's 14 churches on this block. So as the church, what you gonna do? What are you going to do? It's time to finish the assignment. What I come to find now, time is winding up, y'all. The days are getting short. The days are getting short. Song Ruth and Jean interviews, they used to say, and I heard them say, the evening sun is going down. And it's about time to make a change. Guess what? It's time for us to rise and get the assignment completed. He's given us what we need to do it. But it is during the time of assembling that God gives us the instruction on what we need to do when we leave. We assemble every, every Sunday. We assemble online or by way of conference line on Wednesday. That's the time of assembling where we hear instructions, where we get encouraged, where we get uh, salve for our wounds, <laughs> that the wolves <laughs> have inflicted. I'm you're trying to make sure that you understand what I'm saying, but it's time for us, it's time for the church to arise and do what God has called us to do, the assignment. Because when I get to heaven, he's not going to ask me about your assignment. He ain't going to ask me about yours. He's going to ask me what did I do with the assignment he gave me. What did you do with what I gave you? Did you use it? Did you maximize your, your time? What did you
you do between your dash, between your sunrise and your sunset? What did you do in between that time? That time? Oh, Jesus. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Were you, were you the church? Did you do what I assigned your hand to do? Or did you let something distract you? Or did you let something else give you an excuse why you can't or why you shouldn't? It's the assignment. And guess what? God ain't changing the assignment for nobody. He ain't changed it at all. He's not changing it. If you know that you are the church, would you rise to your feet? I'm serious, if you realize that you're the church. And I take this opportunity and I speak to every church standing right now. I speak to every church. that is standing right now that said, I am the church. I belong to God. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. I speak to you now. I speak life into you. I speak motivation to you. I decree the power of God rest upon you and that you would receive what God is imparting into you even now even through the course of this message what he has been trying to do with you what he's been trying to do in you he knows he knows all of your, your, your stuff he knows all of your your your, your setbacks He knows the places where you feel deficient. He sees the places where you're struggling. He sees the places where you're weak. He said, I'm working those things out in your life. But you've allowed those things to hinder you and to stop you. When I already knew that they were there, I know who you are. I know what's going on with you, but you still belong to me. I'm working those things out in you, but you're trying to work them out for you. You can't work them out. i got to work them out. I'm taking you through a process of sanctifying you. I'm taking you through a process of maturing you. I'm working things out in you. I'm removing spot. I'm removing wrinkle. I'm cutting away rough edges. I'm building. I'm removing. God said, I'm doing all of those things in you right now. But I still have given you an assignment. You're my church. You're my light in the earth. You're the salt of the earth. I speak to you now. I speak the deliverance power of God over your life. I decree and I declare that this day you be set free from every bond and every chain that has been keeping you captive. Everything that has been stopping you from going forth and being the church in the earth. And there's some of you all you see and you say, I got it. I, I need to do that. I need to be doing that. But I feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like I can't. I release you from that right now. I set you free from that right now. I remove that barrier. 
I remove that roadblock in the name of Jesus. And I send you forth in the name of Jesus Christ that you will just make that leap, that step of faith and say, God, I'm the church. I belong to you. You know I'm not perfect, but Father, I'm going to put my hand to the work. I'm going to do what you have asked me to do. I'm going to do what you've called me to do as the church. You can make the difference in somebody's life. There are people that are waiting on you, the church. They're waiting on you. You got employees at your job that's waiting on you. There's people in your neighborhood that's waiting on you. Listen, there's somebody in the grocery store. You go on the right day, God gonna use you to bless their lives. They're waiting on you. Quit trying to look down your road and say it's for them to do. No ma'am, no sir, it's for you to do. You are the church. You hear me, you are the church. In the name of Jesus, you are the church. There might be somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Listen, I extend to you this invitation right now to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I extend this invitation to you. Number two, I extend the invitation to those of you that have been backslidden, that's been out of fellowship with God. You forgot that you were the church. And you just kind of backed up. Just kind of sat there with the lights off, the doors locked. Ah, I'm not doing anything. I'm not moving. I'm not, I don't feel I'm not doing anything. I'm just, I'm just here. If you've been in a backslid condition, today is the day. Don't leave here like that. Don't leave here in that condition. Don't leave here in that situation. I say to you today, if you're backslidden, it's time to be restored. You can't afford to walk out of here. People are slipping into eternity. People are going, leaving this world every day. Don't let that be you. If you're backslidden today, and you've been out of fellowship with God, I extend to you this invitation. Would you come? And finally, if you're looking for a church home, I extend to you this invitation today. We open the doors of this church. We open the arms of this church to you. We invite you to come. We invite you. This is that day. This is that season. This is that time. If you're watching by way of social media, if you dial this number 232, I mean, 319-232-3428. We extend to you that same invitation. We'll send somebody. Somebody will answer your call. And we'll get somebody to come minister to you by way of phone. So we say to you today, this is the day. Receive him. Don't leave here in the condition that you came. Come on, if you know that you really are the church of Jesus Christ. Won't you clap your hands and give your praise in this place? Come on, you can do better than that. Give your praise in here. Come on, give your praise in here. Come on, y'all, give your praise in here. Well, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Quicken your church right now. By way of the Spirit, quicken them. Hallelujah. Quicken your people. Quicken them. Quicken them. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah Lord. Remove the stopper from their ears. Huh? That your people will hear what you are saying to the church. Hallelujah. If you could just have your seat. Give me just one second. Let me do these announcements. And we'll get out of your way. Julie, get your thing together so that you can come. The majority of the time, I will only do announcements at the end of services, so this is it. You all know. Um, we want to make sure that we acknowledge all of our sick and our shut-in as the list seems to grow. Names are removed. And other names are added. We want to make sure that we acknowledge all of our bereaved families. A.L. Brown, Mississippi, that is Deacon Marcus, uh, 
Jones, that is his dad. Um, they celebrated his life yesterday there in Mississippi, so please keep um, Deacon Marcus in your prayers. Willie Nelson of Chicago, Phyllis Thudder Simpson, that's here in Waterloo, I believe. And uh, oh, how our hearts grieve for uh, Sandra Hutcherson. Um, there's Sister Anna Lee. That would be Mother uh, Eartha's sister. Uh, that is Pastor Tyree. Uh, that is his mother, Pastor Jonathan's uh, auntie. Uh, passed away on Friday suddenly. We want to make sure that we acknowledge, because uh, she was a member here while she lived here, and then she went back to Omaha with her daughters. Um, and uh, the news kind of just shook me because it was unexpected. But um, we want to acknowledge them. They are there now uh, trying to make preparations. Um, we want you to know that I believe her service is going to be, if I'm correct, on the 25th, uh, that's the, sat the last Saturday of the month, November the 25th, there in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, as more information comes along, we'll forward that to you. Um, if you want to, and I'll have this information for you tomorrow because it's on my phone. Uh, if you want to send a condolence or uh, anything to Pastor Tyree, um, you'll send it to their home address here in Waterloo but we'll have that information for you tomorrow. I mean, next Sunday, because uh, Pastor Daphne did send me that. So we just ask that you would please keep them in prayer. And then Deacon Leon um, lost his last living aunt, I believe he said, uh, in Mississippi. Is it Mississippi? Yeah. In Mississippi. And I believe her name is Anna Will. Annie Will Ross. Annie Will Ross. Uh, and so we want, he'll be heading to Mississippi as well. So we want to make sure that we keep uh, these families in prayer. Um, as I told you before, people are leaving here every day. Um, they're fine one day and then the next day. And so we want to make sure that we uh, keep them in prayer. And also we want to keep Mama, Mother Lily Hart in prayer. And then also uh, Minister Harry Carson, we ask that you would please uh, keep him in prayer as he would pray for us. That's right. Trust me. If he if he ever tells you I'm gonna pray for you, or if he knows that he's gonna pray for you and he coming to see you, he needs our prayers right now. Right. And so we pray that you would please keep him in your prayers. Uh, they need our prayers as well. And then also we want to say happy birthday to all of those celebrating birthdays uh, in this month of November. We say happy birthday to you pray God's blessings on you. If you ordered a t-shirt and you haven't gotten it yet, um, they are here um, at the service. You can ask one of the office staff and they can get them for you. Um, and then we'll be making another order because we got some other people that want some um, or some of those products with the something good, something God. And then on the first Sunday uh, in December, we want everybody that got them to wear those, please. Um, we have a leadership meeting this coming Tuesday. I need every praise and worship leader. I need every musician, sound booth, the whole thing. Um, I need you to make sure that you are present for that meeting on uh, this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. And then on uh, the 21st, that's Tuesday, that's next, not this Tuesday, the following Tuesday, the 21st at 7 p.m., we are the guests uh, at Impact Church of Hope. It is their Thanksgiving convocation. Um, it's all, it's, I think it's Sunday evening, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, of next, uh, the following week. And so um, we will be there on the 21st at 7 p.m. So we're inviting you to come in the music department and I will be there. Um, we have a men's gathering on Saturday, December the 2nd. Uh, I'll have more details for you again next Sunday. I had a crazy week this week, so I didn't get around to some of the details for that. Uh, the women's tea. Uh, December the 9th at noon, free of charge. Um, they'll be having that um, uh, this coming uh, on the 9th of December at noon here at the church. Uh, and then also, uh, she's in the back, so I, I don't, she'll have to 
speak this to you and let you all know about this marriage ministry thing. I believe that is this coming uh, Saturday, but uh, Pastor Judea will have to talk more about that because I'm not uh, real sure on the details of that. And then also Pastor Shator and Pastor Jonathan wanted me to let you know uh, the thing that was scheduled for the 25th of November for the youth department, they're gonna have to reschedule that because of, of the services for um, Mother Anna Lee um, are, is on that day in Omaha, and so they will all be there. Uh, so they're going to reschedule that for uh, a later date. So please, please uh, remember that. And then also remember that on the 19th, next Sunday evening at 4 p.m., um, that we will be having the cake auction here at the church. Um, it is for uh, Tobias Sisk, um, who is, uh, he's, he's from Waterloo. This is Jackie and Chantel's nephew who suffered a major uh, asthma attack that has left him uh, paralyzed and basically incapacitated. Um, he's, he's, you know, fighting for his life, let's put it that way. Making some great strides, but still got a long way to go. Uh, and his mother has had to stop working to take care of him. Uh, and right now he is back in the hospital um, still fighting um, to get better. Um, and they need our help, they need our assistance. Um, and so we want to, uh, the family is hosting this, we're hosting it here, but this is being given um, by his family, but we want to help, uh, help them as much as we can help them. They need us and they need our help. Uh, and so we want you to remember that next Sunday uh, at 4 p.m. here at the church, uh, is the cake auction. I want you to know we've had that in the past and it has been hilarious, uh, especially with the, uh, what they call them things that do them, auctioneer, Sister Lisa, y'all, she crazy, I don't know what, but it will be, uh, it, it will, I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a good time, um, but it's for a good cause, and so we want you to uh, remember that. Come on, ladies. <laughs> We are raffling off um, a Louis, Louis Vuitton purse. Um, the raffle tickets for that is $5. Um, yep, and it comes with the, the Louis Vuitton bag um, with that. You're going too far. Come on back. <laughs> Folks in the virtual sanctuary can't see you. Praise Jesus, Lord. <laughs> virtual sanctuary, it is a Louis Vuitton purse. Um, all of the proceeds that are gathered from the raffle tickets that we sell, they benefit the Heart to Hands ministry. Heart to Hands ministry is a ministry here in the church. Um, we do free community meals to the community um, monthly. Um, we also do things for the youth department. Um, and it's, it, it just goes further than that. But, you know, we're just trying to do some things to help defray the cost. Um, so we thought this purse would be one of the things, $5 raffle ticket. And then on the back wall back there, under the coat rack, um, there are some really, really beautiful vases, um, some black artwork. Those are a dollar um, for those raffle tickets. So if you are interested, um, please see myself, see Julie, um, and give your money. And then, of course, next month, we will, um, before, Christmas. before Christmas, we will announce the winners of these things that we have um, raffled off. Amen, saints? Amen. 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 Listen, before we get ready to leave here, let me ask you this question. The Lord brought something back to my remembrance. And I need to ask this question. There are it was yesterday, late evening. Um, the Lord had dropped something in my spirit and I was praying about it. And he dropped it back in my spirit and brought it to my remembrance as I was sitting there. There are those here today that are 
in a financial warfare. And you, somebody would say, Bishop, that's everybody. No, it's not everybody. But there are those that are dealing with some financial struggles that are very dire at this moment. If that is you, I need to anoint your hands. I'm just following what the Spirit of the Lord told me to do. And I pray that God would multiply and God would cause that which you need to be given, to be released. In the name of Jesus, if that's you, and let me tell you, I'm not saying if you got financial issues because you want to do something foolish, or something that is outside of the will of God because he's not going to bless it. But if it's a serious situation and it has to do with your well-being, God sees and he knows. And I pray that as we do this, God would release that financial miracle to you. And y'all know I don't fool around with this much. But I feel the unction of God to do it. There's some debts that need to be canceled. Mm. There's some tax debts that need to be cleared up. My God. There's some garnishments that need to be held back. Mm. There's some child support that needs to be taken care of. In the name of Jesus. You still been waiting on the student loan services deal with your loans. God is able. God is able. I stand here as a witness. $98,000 zeroed all the way out. So God is able. Mortgage needs to be caught up. Car note needs to be caught up. Hmm. My question to you, because this is this is a this is a funny kind of thing because we don't want nobody to know our business. You know, people are nosy. Don't think the only nosy folks outside the church because some of them sit in church. But even if you come to me when this service is over, I'll anoint your hands. But if you say, I don't care who sees me, I just need God to move. Come on.